Hey, what's going on guys? This is me, Asin, and uh, as you can see, this is my deck profile for Nats, uh, the event that just happened. Uh, so N-A-W-C-Q, um, so no for North America. Uh, the deck that I played was Danger Thunder Crusadia Guard Dragon. I managed to make it all the way to round 11 before getting my third loss, so that's unfortunate. If I just had two more wins, I would have made it to the top 64. Um... Yeah, no, the deck that I played was absolutely amazing. It wasn't flawless, though. I probably should have changed a few things uh, in my side deck. One card in my main deck and one card in my extra deck. But apart from that, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, I literally destroyed so many people when I went first. It was nuts. I was getting hand shopped once, twice, thrice, and it didn't matter. I would just always do the full combo. Uh, and the full combo is insane. It's Hieratic Seal, Hot Red, Dragon Archfiend, Abyss. Uh, one, two, at least. Actually, I would say a two Colossus uh, with, you know, the Levineer and the Diabolos hand, uh, hand Rip. And if my opponents hand shot me and I was able to play through them, I would, you know, they would start their turn with even less cards in their hand. So th this deck was just absolutely amazing. Uh, I did have a lot of practice with it because I've been playing Danger Thunder since October. I believe I was the first person in the TCG to come up with the Danger Thunder deck. Um, you know, I I told Jesse Cotton, oh, okay, did you thought uh, to put uh, Fairy Tail Snow in the deck? And I was like, oh, I actually never thought of that. Um, same same thing with the Dangers. Uh, I played Danger Thunder. Uh, it was a weird combo, actually. I played with uh, Curious Griffin to send Imperial Order Fairy Tail Snow, while Jesse actually essentially went summon Sorceress to make multiple Super Bowls. And then he would go uh, Scaldi to draw some cards, special summon more monsters, um, you know, special summon Fairy Tail Snow off of Summon Sorceress to target uh, on Mathematician because it was Spellcaster. But uh, yeah, anyways, that was the good old, uh, some good old days. Uh, but now the deck evolved a lot. The Guard Dragons are super explosive. Uh, I was 701 before round 9, and then my first loss was on round 9, and then I lost 3 in a row. Uh, so my first loss was to Salaman Great. Game 3, I got hand shopped 4 times. I was still able to end on Colossus and Hot Red. Uh, however, my opponent has Gazelle and Spinny, and for turn he draws Lancia, so he was able to play through everything, because he has a Phantasme to negate and destroy my Hot Red if I try to negate a monster on his field, so it doesn't really work. So I kept my Hot Red negate all the way for um, Fusion of Fire. Uh, and I, I still lost because, like I said, he drew Lancia for turn. So I got hand trapped five times in two turns. That that was really rough. Uh, then my loss after was on me. I should have scooped game one against Orcist because he had a, a combo and I drew like an, an average hand. I was able to break three negates, but I wasn't really able to like establish anything. Uh, so I sh it's my fault. I should have scooped there. And then game two, I just lost because um, uh, he sided Lancia since he knew I played uh, Danger Thunder. Uh, and then the, my third and final loss against Manav in round 11. I won the dice roll to completely bricked. I drew double thunder dragon with triple baby dragon. So I lost at the speed of light and game two I make him go first. And he draws a pretty good hand with metaverse and I, I can't play through... Uh, I can't play through mine unfortunately so I lost from there. Uh, but apart from that no the... Um, uh, the event was absolutely amazing. Before I get any further, I would just like to give a huge shout out to Jesse Flores and Romelo Wilson for actually just helping me so much building this deck. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't even have reached the tournament. Uh, you know, Jesse just keeps helping me. He's literally my sensei. <laughs> I, I pretty much build decks sometimes just because he tells me, oh, you know, this is the deck to play. You should, like, try to think of that, like tr try to think of like a way to like um, break it. So it's, you know, it's, 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 the, it's how we motivate ourselves, I guess. And Romello, he, uh, he shows me the goo, uh, you know, as you can see in my side deck, I have Mystic Mine. Uh, I didn't have that before Friday, like the day before uh, Nats. So I had like an hour left for pre-reg and I just you know, said, you know what, I'm removing no material and some other cards. I'm putting uh, Mystic Mine instead. And it worked like a charm. It was just absolutely broken. I decked out several people with this. And I should have won against Wei Li. But uh, some stuff happened. And instead of me winning, uh, it was a draw. And Wei actually ended up getting his top four uh, uh, Worlds invite. So that's nice. Congrats to you, Wei. Uh, yeah, technically should have won. 
But anyways, you know, it's my fault at the same time for not knowing, you know, rules in Yu-Gi-Oh that much because I don't go to many events. Um, but yeah, anyways. So, also I, ha I have to give a huge shout out to Alessandro for actually hooking me up with this deck because I don't own any of it. And I have the deck on me at the moment, it's just that I don't really have like a good camera to record it. So it'll just be like a really crappy video, but I'm just going to record everything on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro at the moment because can't really do it uh, with the physical cards. But anyways, uh, let's get on to the deck profile. So as you can see, I have the, you know, standard Diablo's Bigfoot with the um, nine other dangers, the guarantees, uh, triple levy, eight thunder cards, uh, so one roar and one hawk. I don't like double roar. It's not a card that you're trying to see in your opening hand. It's just like a card that you can dig for with Skulldeet. So when you get your special summon, you get like double Superbolt and you get a search after that with the... Uh, Thunder Dragon Dark, you absolutely no, don't need to play more. Like, my my Thunder Heavy Hands were the ones that made me lose, like, games, to be honest. It wasn't really, like, Danger Crusadia Hands. Uh, as a matter of fact, I play a lot of Crusadias with different names because they are the ones that allow me to play through interruptions. Uh, so, as you can see, I even play Leonis, which is uh, interesting because it's the only Crusadia that actually does nothing beneficial at all. Uh, Arborea is interesting because when you go for Reclusia's effect, you can banish uh, the uh, Arborea from the graveyard to keep Reclusia on the field. Uh, so that's nice. And I guess you can play through like a Ghost Ogre on Magius, but nobody would do that. Especially if they know that you have Arborea in the grave. It's really bad. Uh, and the Maximus is also interesting because, well, first of all, his stats are mm, slightly better than the other Crusadias, even though it's kind of irrelevant. But also it's a light attribute, so if you have Maximus and Collapse Serpent only, at least it's combo. Whereas if you had like, you know, I don't know, like Arborea and a Baby Dragon, it obviously doesn't, it, it doesn't do anything. So yeah. And obviously I forgot to mention the six Baby Dragons, uh, you're crazy if you're not playing 3-3. Uh, three, three. Uh, literally playing two Collapse Serpent is suicidal. It's absolutely needed because if you can banish a light, which is really easy, it gets you to the Wyver Buster. Uh, and I don't play Battery Man Solar because the Crusadias are already normal summon by the by themselves, and Solar only combos with Hawk and Wyver Buster. It doesn't necessarily combo with Duo and Levineer because it relies on other cards in your hand, which is not you know it, it's not gonna happen consistently. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the Eclipse and Brotor to summon off uh, uh, Alpi and Hieratic Seal. Uh, you know, really good cards. Not have nothing else to say there. Uh, I already explained the uh, guard dragons. Uh, Saka's light is obvious. I didn't want to main deck allure or twin or something like that. It, it makes like no sense to be honest. And I do not own the price card, so I couldn't play it. And if I could play it, I would play it. So uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, for my extra deck, absolutely everything here is standard. No beat cup, landfallen kiss instead, uh, because the light attribute can matter. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the one of the best effects of Levineer actually is the triple light effect. Uh, to bring back a monster from the graveyard because that monster doesn't have its effect like negated. Uh, yeah, it's in defense, but I, I think it's a really strong effect. Depending on how you use it, it can be extremely explosive. Sometimes it's the reason why you can unbrick and make Skulldeed for four. I used that effect several times, obviously less than the triple dark, but I used it more than the mixed uh, light and dark actually. Uh, you know, when you get hand shopped multiple times, you you need to like know what your deck is doing. So uh, having light access is definitely crucial, um, and yeah. And Sanifond shouldn't have been in my extra deck, I just didn't have enough practice against Salamangrate. I thought if you got Dweller, you just lost from there. Uh, turns out this deck is significantly better than I thought at playing through Dweller. As a matter of fact, against someone I knew from New York actually, uh, on I think round 7, he had Dweller, Roar, and Valor. And not only did I manage to like play through it, I broke his board and I OTK'd for 17,000 damage through Dweller and Roar and Valor. That's absolutely nuts. So Sanifon just completely useless. If you can, you know, if you're under Dweller and you can get to two level eights, chances are you're not even doing anything else and you're probably just losing to Rage Control uh, next turn. So it's complete garbage. There's really no reason to play Sanifon. This shouldn't have, this should have been a Zombie Stein actually going second against uh, Brandish. I mean, just make Zombie Stein negate Metaverse, uh, and you know that would have made me win like game two against Mana, for example. 
because I made a Harbinger and he went Metaverse. I'm like, oh shit, I, I guess I could have won that game actually with a better extra deck. So uh, yeah. And my side deck, obviously, the MVP driver, the card that I kept drawing. I swear on my life, I didn't draw Gamma a single time. I drew driver thrice, <laughs> three times. Lancia, Lancia was also shit. Every time I Lancia people, they always made boards. <laughs> so, thank the Lord, I was drawing Lancia and Mystic Mind, so I was still winning. But if I was drawing Lancia alone, forget it. The card does nothing. If you play Crusadias, they can play through everything. <laughs> Lancia is actual like really bad on its own. Droll, however, is insane. The odds of being able to like have a hand that plays through Droll inherently is really hard. It's pretty much as if your opponent had one surge and then from there on out he was under Colossus. It's really impactful. It does a lot and people just underestimate that and actually it's even worse than Colossus because you can't even get the draws of the dangers. So yeah, no, it's it's really insane. Droll and Lockbird was really broken. I, it won also made me win every single game I saw it. So I don't know, I should have played three maybe? Maybe I shouldn't even have played Gamma in the first play. That card sucked. And the twin also shouldn't have been twin. It should have been spell canceller. That card would have that card would have came up like a, a lot of times because I played against Shun Ping, I think round five or six. I twinned his artifact scythe when he bricked, and that made him win the game because next turn he drew Ray and I had nothing. So if it was a spell canceller, I would have won. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, twin sucks. Don't don't play that card. And Mystic Mine, I already said it was an absolute blowout. I won every single time I drew it. I think, yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, that was that's pretty much it. Uh, Shoutouts to everyone uh, that I met from Ottawa, Toronto, and Montreal, and also my American friends, of course, Sammy, the Goat, Hani, and Hisam. You know, Joe, all my brothers, man. Huge shout out goes to you guys, and uh, that's pretty much it. I'm probably going to be able to reach YCS Portland, and. Um, uh, the next regionals in Montreal. I don't even know if there's going to be like Ottawa regionals like in the near future. I hope so because this year we had like no Ottawa regional. That's, that actually sucked. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you very much guys for watching this deck profile. I'll probably be a bit more active now. Uh, I'll try to upload that Endymion deck profile. Actually, I, I couldn't upload it because... Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to play it for Nats. Turns out I played this instead, but uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, soon. Peace.